Hi lovely viewers, it's me again your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. So here is the thing, uh, my brothers and sisters. I don't like to to be inconsistent. I like to be consistent in whatever I'm doing. If I start something, I want to do it uh, to my best and uh, when I need to, to do it. Unfortunately, this time around, I've been having challenges uh, to be consistent on my programs uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, part of the reason is that um, I mean, just being here is a little bit difficult. You see, right now, uh, I've just come to the gym, and uh, uh, you people are just going to sleep, but here, the day is just st starting. And so, to do the program at that time, and, uh, you know, manage, it's like I'm living, I'm living between two time zones. And it is, I'm finding it a little bit difficult to, to really um, have things uh, working smoothly there uh, because I can't find the right time that is good for me here and that is good uh, for you back, back home. Uh, following the time uh, back home, uh, it disturbs other things. For example, when I wake up, I have to wake up around 01.30 for me to do that program. But then uh, I also need to go to church at 6.30. So if I wake up at 0102, 02, I'm doing the program, which goes up to about 04, 04.30. I can't sleep and then wake up to go to church at six hours. So that is one of the challenges. In the evening, I have a challenge. You find that people here, I mean, they, uh, there is activity. You, there is activity that uh, goes on up to about zero, zero. Like, for example, at church, we have, um, you know, meetings that start at uh, 20 hours. You know, so uh, 20 hours... That is when the meeting is starting, and then it will go on up to 22, sometimes 23. So you have long days here, and yet I have to do to sleep a bit and then wake up at 02, 02, uh, do my program, you know, to fit into the Zambian time, then uh, come back, you know, fit into uh, this. Uh, time here where I have to start my, my, my day early, you know, basically here, the days start early and they end late. So it is pretty much uh, uh, a, a problem and um, uh, that I'm finding it difficult. Of course, there are other reasons. Other reasons is part of the frustration that some of the things, you know, that I advocate for don't seem to go very well, you know, don't seem to go very well. Sometimes I wish I was on the ground, I were on the ground and then, you know, do this and that. But, you know, just being here and talking sometimes, it's a little bit of a, a challenge. Of course, my family issues, they can also really drain me. I tell you, family issues can also really drain me. You know, living apart in this situation uh, is also not easy. Eh? It's not easy. Of course, other issues is also, I mean, <laughs> some of my friends, some of those people that I count on, sometimes they also just put me off in the way that uh, they, they, they do things, you know. So it's a number of, uh, a number of, uh, of, 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 of challenges. But I know somebody will say, well, come back home and whatever, whatever. The challenge is that also that, I mean, there is no home for me in Zambia at the moment. As long as the Vaka in the HDMI is in power, uh, there is no home for me. Uh, the moment I go, I come back to Zambia, Nijereine. And uh, I think I'm better off uh, here doing the little that I do than um, being in Zambia and being in jail. 
I know even when I think of my family, sometimes it affects me in the sense that I'm not doing much for for my family. I'm not able to, you know, uh, attend to most of their needs and other things. But uh, uh, I ask myself, what is better? Being in prison where I can't even speak to them. At least here, I can even call them. I can encourage them. Uh, I can advise, you know. So at least by the fact that I'm here, though I'm not able to provide as much as, um, you know, I'm supposed to, there is something that is positive about being here. And what is positive is that I can talk to them, I can, you know, advise, and um, yeah, it's just different. Look, here I can even do gym, you know. You won't get these facilities in, in our Zambian prisons. It's terrible there. It's really terrible. So, somehow I say this is an open prison for me. <laughs> I take it like it's an open prison for me. Uh, uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's not easy. Exile is not easy. Exile is not easy. This is not a diaspora. You know, because some people, uh, you know, they take me like I'm in diaspora. Some of you, you even uh, ask for for money. Uh, uh, it's not it's not the same. It's not the same. All I can do is talk, um, talk, and do what I can to to live. And these exercises. Uh, what keeps me going because most of the times I am indoor and this is why it frustrates me so much when I don't see things happening properly back you see home. The, the issue of uh, eligibility for example you know I'm not one person that uh, wants to uh, be disillusioned or uh, pretend that uh, things uh, are not happening. I'm a person that wants to look at things realistically, uh, see where they are going, and possibly prepare for, um, you know, other steps. I always want to be ahead of things. I don't want to be behind. Now, when you look at the issue of eligibility, it is very clear that um, Haka uh, Inde Ichilema and the entire UPND system, they have resolved to uh, eliminate Edgar Chogalungu uh, from contesting the next elections. They know that uh, having, Haka Inde, uh, having Edgar Chogalungu contesting the elections is very risky for them. They might lose the elections. So they have resolved, they have resolved in no uncertain terms, they have resolved to bar Edgar Chagwalungu. And um, uh, the courts are not going to help us. I've always argued that uh, you don't do politics in court. You don't do politics in court. Because those people who are in court are also part of the political system. They are also part of the political system. And usually they favor those who are in government. And it doesn't matter who is in government. Even, even if it were Ed Galungu, even if it were me, you know, those people have got families. They are human beings. You know, they look at their interest. They look at what is at stake. So playing politics in court is not the, is not the way. Forget it, going to court and say, I'm going to fight political battles in court. No, no, it doesn't work. It doesn't work. So for me, I don't, I don't see justice uh, being rendered to Edgar Chagalu. So, in my view, uh, in my view, uh, we needed to fight this outside the court. And how could we have done this? We could have done it. Those people that are supporting Edgar Chagwalungu should have come forth, should have come forth to put pressure because at the end of the day, power belongs to the people. And unless those people 
you know, stand up. The political system will always favor the powerful. Unless people who are the ultimate custodian of power, unless they stand up, we will not, we will not have the, uh, we will not have uh, uh, justice. So in this case, if those people who are really in support of Edgar Chagwalungu came forth and put pressure on the political system, it would have worked. But unfortunately, it does not seem to be happening. We have tried to push, I personally, I will tell you that I've tried to push that people who are, who are saying they support Edgar Chagwalungu would be able to stand up for Edgar Chagwalungu. Unfortunately, those people, they are nowhere to be seen. They are nowhere to be seen. There is no political pressure. There is no uh, people power pushing for Edgar Chagwalungu to contest the elections. And it is all left in the hands of the courts. And like I have said, you can never get a justice uh, on political matters in court. So, from the way I see it, Ed Galungu is going to be bad. And the, the people that claim to be supporting Edgar Chagalungu are not stepping forward to fight for Edgar Chagalungu or better still to fight with Edgar Chagalungu because this is, is a fight. It's a fight. And unfortunately, I don't think we are putting up, you know, uh, the best that we can in this fight. I don't think we are. From a number of fronts, from a number of fronts, we are not putting up a good fight to win this. And uh, if somebody thought that uh, it's going to be easy, it's going to be given, you know, like uh, a, a bacon on a plate, it's not going to happen. Haka Inde Ichilema will not let go of presidency without a fight. He's going to fight. And it's not only him fighting, it is also the system around him. It is also the powers that are behind Haka Inde Ichilema. You know Haka Inde Ichilema was a big project for big uh, conglomerates for big institutions, for big countries. For a number of years, Haka Inde Ichilem was their project until they managed to install him in state house. I don't think these people will allow uh, Haka Inde Ichilem to lose power within uh, five years unless there is a fight, a, a fight and not what we are doing. There is no fight now. There is no fight. There is no fight unless there is real fight. That is when Edgar uh, Haka Inde Ichilema can leave that power. He won't give that power to anyone easily unless there is that fight. You see, we are in Zambia. We are carrying a fear. No, Shani. Without Lungu, there will be no elections. Without Lungu, there will be no elections. But uh, a initiative guy to show that Muli Siri has a formula for a mule for a lunga with a ballot, have a ballot. Mufile Mawako a little bit more serious. Mufile Mawako a little bit more serious because mm, he gave me now he cost a long to change it. Yara to pita, yara to pita, and to allow each other money, more money, more money, more money. Eh? Eh, it's the people. The people need to stand up. The people need to come out. So, not to have uh, a problem with theories. And then there is this. Uh there is this argument that other people are, are making to say um, if Ed Galungu is disqualified, uh, then the last election is nullified. I've got an intel what the UPND uh, legal minds are saying, and this is what they, they are going to bring before court. Um, uh, they are preparing themselves for that challenge. They are preparing themselves in the case that um, uh, Edgar Lungu's uh, eligibility case is uh, done away with. Then some legal arguments come up where people file to say no, um, because he was not uh, eligible. Uh, so the elections of the 2021 is now void. Well, the legal minds 
of the UPND as an argument that the elections. Since he lost the elections, he was not eligible, but since he lost the elections, I mean the, the elections of uh, 2021 uh, are still valid. So this is the argument that the UPND uh, are preparing to come and argue before the court that yes, Edgar Lungu was not eligible, but since he lost, the elections remain valid. So, in a way, these guys, they have gone miles ahead to prepare for everything, to put aside Ed Galungo and then continue with business as usual. And like I said, it all comes down to the issue of you cannot fight political battles in court. Only people can fight political battles according to what they want or who they want to lead them. Unless people stand up, you don't expect courts to do anything. So that's what we that's what that is what is on the table. And these are some of the things that are basically uh, bothering me and to some extent frustrating me. You see, things will always be the same unless the people themselves fight. There is an attitude of, you know, thinking that somebody's going to do it. Nobody's going to do it for you. You have to fight by yourselves. I'm seeing very few people committed to this cause. Very few people committed to this cause. Even those that you are supposed to expect that. Bafide Bakosa, Bani Fuma, Bani Landa. Ah, nothing in Dara. Nothing. Nothing. Tatuli ruin kondo ya kwa nina Tetumpo ke pawa so mdara Mepo ka pawa Ati ukutamsha mumbwe na nzeko Hey Tetu fi wombe Tetu fi wombe eh? Tetu fi wombe mdara Tufuye Pafuye Yari kava Yari kava Ukupo ke charo Ukupo ke mtampo kuteka Tepa no no yo Alright, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you, peace. I gotta go.